Tonight, a woman in a wheelchair terrorised in a break-in. Compulsory DV training for 17,000 police. Not much reprieve for renters with low vacancy rates. And two koalas heading back into the wild. This is 7 News with Rob Bruff and Joanne Desmond. Good evening. Thanks very much for joining us. Good evening. A woman who's a paraplegic has been terrorised by hooded thieves who stole her modified car. Asti Savage says she felt helpless during the frightening encounter when one of the thieves openly mocked her. Life hasn't been easy for Asti Savage, formerly known as Asti Pool. She was left wheelchair bound in 2001 when she was struck by a stolen car on Flinders Street. Two years later, she was shot by a neighbour. Now she's had her modified car stolen by thieves while making coffee. Next minute I heard this rustling on the table and I turned from the kettle and had a look and this guy was in my house with balaclavas. The offender grabbed her bag off her lap and ran to accomplices waiting out the front. Literally eyeballed me and then took off and knew that I couldn't catch him so I, I wheeled outside to watch him drive down the road. But um, as they were bursting out, my car, out of my driveway, they waved at me. The encounter left her feeling extremely vulnerable. There was nothing I could do, you know. He, he could have done anything to me, thrown me out of my chair, onto the floor, then I would have just been absolutely helpless. She's hoping to borrow a wheelchair-friendly car while police track hers down. In my predicament, I feel worse off, not that I'm any better than anyone else, but just worse off because I can't just go and hire a normal car. The incident, a cruel reminder of the current crime crisis. It's heartbreaking. It lacks compassion and it shows a generation of complete and utter untouchables who just don't have any consequences for their behaviour. Imogen Brooks, 7 News. Well, drivers may be sitting on the solution to their car theft concerns with $500 vouchers still not redeemed in North Queensland. Of the 19,000 car immobiliser vouchers handed out by Queensland Police late last year, only 7,000 have been cashed in. Police are urging drivers to find the time before the trial finishes. We don't think twice about a dead bolt on our house or a sensor light. So this is just something to take that next step to make sure that a vehicle is just as safe. With the trial ending on June 30, police are encouraging drivers to visit one of 60 installers listed on their website. Police are boosting training for officers to cope with call-outs for domestic violence incidents. 17,000 officers will need to complete compulsory DV training. And by the end of this year, specialist units will also be set up. Sergeant Elise Feltham is the woman behind the state's first specialist DV training package. Based in Townsville, she said police respond to up to 50 domestic violence call-outs every day. We cannot change this unless people are educated and understand that it is an enormous problem and so many women are losing their lives. So our role ultimately is to support the front line. Working with local support services, she has designed a domestic violence training package to better equip and support officers especially those suffering from DV fatigue. Police back in the day, obviously, you were just tough and you went in and you just did your job. And we didn't recognise the effects it would have us on us psychologically. It's a welcome development for domestic violence survivor Evie Clayton, who was forced to flee to a woman's shelter with her mother before moving to Townsville. When I was a kid, the, it was a common saying that police don't interfere with domestic affairs. We were both so frightened and we didn't know what to do because do we call, will it aggravate him more? Will they help us? Will they come? So, it's, yeah, it was pretty scary as a kid. A National Survivor Day ambassador, Evie works to help women and children every day. I don't want any other woman or child to have to go through what I went through and they are still going through it at alarming rates. So I think some specialist training to ha have that full understanding to be able to support survivors is so important. Bethany Ross, 7 News. And what's being described as a win for motorists, secret road safety data will be released to the public. The federal government has promised for better access to critical information relating to the Bruce Highway after a media campaign in partnership with the NRMA called for improvements. It comes two days after a woman was killed in a traffic crash at Inkerman. She's one of 92 people who have lost their lives in Queensland road crashes so far this year. 
There's no reprieve for renters, with new data showing Queensland's vacancy rate is nearly 1%. Per capita, it's also the most expensive state to rent in Australia. But one lawyer turned social media star has come up with a daring solution. The lights are off and nobody's been home at this investment property for more than four years. They could have someone living in it, rent it out or something. Obviously it must be an investor that owns it and they just letting it sit there. The property is one of up to 136,000 across Australia left vacant for extended periods. Homes are for people to live in, let's let people live in them. 0.8% of houses are unoccupied in Harvey Bay and Toowoomba, 0.7% in the Sunshine Coast, Rockhampton and Cairns, while 1% sit empty in Townsville. Jordan Vandenberg, known online as Purple Pingers, offers a controversial solution to help those desperate for a home. Uh, publishing the, the addresses of empty empty homes um, that have been vacant for you know quite some time and particularly in uh, regional Queensland um, there are quite a few people reaching out. Squatting can be legal under adverse possession but raises moral concerns and isn't an ideal solution. Of course it's not their property and they haven't been allocated the property. The Real Estate Institute of Queensland says outrage over rental shortages is often aimed at owners and investors, despite a lack of social housing over the last 10 years. People are dying on the streets and we've mm. got empty homes. Like, let's mm. sort that out, please. Tom Duffy, 7 News. All Bonza flights have been grounded until at least next Tuesday. 160 staff have also been stood down. The administrator said with no immediate scope to resume operations, they were left with no choice. Meetings are continuing over the budget airline's future. We might be a little wacky with our ringtones, but there's been a steady decline in downloads, with young people shunning phone calls and texting instead. A Vodafone survey shows while older Aussies max their volume, Gen Z and Gen Y have gone silent. <laughs> Hello? Hello? They're meant to jolt us into answering, but are ringtones going the way of the dinosaurs? Latest research by Vodafone shows 96% of Aussie boomers always keep their phones on and alert. Older generations have their phone on full volume. Yeah, it's 69, I'm sort of like, yeah, I need to have something that's quite loud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Gen Z and Younger are doing the opposite. More than a third turning their phones and notifications to silent, despite their daily screen time averaging more than seven hours. While um, younger generations prefer to communicate via text messages, about two thirds of Gen Z still consider phone calls to be important. 35% of millennials hit mute, but strangely more than a quarter will buy a custom ringtone. 91-year-old Robert didn't even realise ringtones could be changed. Do you know what your ringtone is? No. But whether they answer now, later or text instead, one thing's certain, future generations won't be hanging up. In a way, like I think we're more connected than ever. Tom Duffy, 7 News. Ahead tonight in 7 News, a man slams thieves who stole his BMW from a locked car park. And Treacle and Pearly to celebrate Wild Koala Day with her rush to the bush. <laughs> Townsville turns to 7 News to keep up to date on local issues and we want you to be a part of it. If there's something happening in your street, your suburb, we want to know about it. Send us a message or drop us an email. Thanks for joining us here on 7. A Townsville man living in a multi-storey apartment unit has fallen victim to car theft. Thieves had to scale three balcony floors to enter Kendall James's unit in North Ward. They took his keys and his BMW from the locked car park. Entered both my balcony and the balcony downstairs and took both our cars. So, yeah, stolen two cars. Four in the morning, um, none of us heard anything, it was that quiet. It's the third break and enter at the unit block in the last two days. Kendall says incidents like this are becoming part of what living in Townsville means, but he says tougher action is needed to curb crime. Two koalas are ready to get back into the wild after a rehab at the Magnetic Island Koala Hospital. Treacle and Pearly will be released tomorrow to celebrate International Wild Koala Day.
It's a big weekend for two little koalas. It's a very special day tomorrow. Um, it's not only are we celebrating Wild Koala Day, um, we're also celebrating our 50th hand-raised joey, going back out to the wild. After a few months in care, Treacle and Pearly are being released together on Magnetic Island. It's kind of a bittersweet moment just because obviously we've had them in care for a long time. You're kind of really worried when you do send them back out there, but that's what it's all about. Ali and her team have been rehabilitating koalas for more than 20 years, helping 391 so far. But they want a permanent space to educate and make people more aware of the animals. There's just a huge demand and a huge desire for people to come and see and support what they're doing on the island. Um, but obviously being run in a, a family backyard at the moment doesn't make that viable. Magnetic Island is home to the largest, most northern population of koalas. The more people that care, um, the more we can try and sort of protect them. They're now endangered, so it makes it really important. Imogen Brooks, 7 News. A fourth generation local store is particularly proud of one employee who's an expert in small talk. Two-year-old Miller has been helping her parents and grandparents stock the aisles ever since she could walk. Making sure everything has a place, two-year-old Miller must be one of the youngest employees in history. When Miller comes into the store, it makes it a little bit more fun because the staff and the, the customers especially really love having her around. Her family owns the Tawantan IGA. We've had to bring her in just occasionally um, a few times and um, yeah, then she was just took it, took to it like a duck with water. Miller's grandparents took over in 1993 from their own parents. We're 30 years old now. And started a family trend. Miller works hard to earn her pocket money. Something that a lot of kids don't get the opportunity to do. It's um, a good education for her and you know she can't just enjoy the fruits of the labour. But occasionally, like any two-year-old, she needs some motivation and doesn't mind chocolate. <laughs> It's hoped Miller will stick with it and become the fourth generation to take over the store. Yeah, we'll see what happens. No pressure, obviously, but <laughs> yeah, we'll see what happens. Rebecca Jensen, 7 News. Oh, very cute little Miller, and she's doing a great job there. Much better work <laughs> ethic than me, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, <right. laughs> no doubt, enjoying all the attention, yes. eh? So the Cowboys, they out to repeat a round one result, mate. They are, Bruffy. On that day, they smashed the Dolphins by 25, but North Queensland knows Wayne Bennett's men are looking a lot sharper since then. We'll have more on that next. And the Cowboys NRLW players ready to represent Queensland in this year's historic Origin Series. Stream 7 News anywhere, anytime. Live and on demand on 7 Plus. And with 7news.com.au, you'll know the news now. And welcome back. Well, the Cowboys are hoping to find themselves back in the top eight tomorrow night by claiming their second win of the season over the Dolphins. Wayne Bennett's side have a few key fours back from injury, though, while North Queensland's hoping to give their latest club debutant plenty to cheer about. The Cowboys made a meal of them back in round one, but the Dolphins are looking a little different in May. They've been consistent, you know, um, they haven't lost two games in a row. They never beat themselves. Unfortunately for the Cowboys, they can't say the same, but coach Todd Payton wants that to change and quickly. I want to make teams earn it, um, not just gifting them opportunities by our own decisions and, and poor execution. He says if they do that, they will be hard to beat, and their opponents agree. They can certainly score some points on you. So. They did that to us last time down here in the game one of the season, so we've just got to be prepared to make sure that we can uh, handle what they throw at us. But are the Dolphins distracted? Their coach Wayne Bennett, front and centre of speculation as South's next coach. Yeah, I spoke to them, or they spoke to me, whatever. Well, I'm going to be unemployed at the end of the year, Joel, so need a job. But for now, it's all about tomorrow's trip to Townsville. We've just got to execute and and um, you know be brave enough to, to take the Cowboys on and not sit back and be passive and waiting for something to happen. Helam Lukey returns from injury for his first full game since the last time these two sides met. And the coach has got a clear message for the club's debutant, Viliami Vailia. Spoke to him today, thought he had a, a good week defensively. Um, just asked him not to wait for the game to come to him. He's got to go to the contest. Kickoff is 7.35pm. Emma Halliday, 7 News.
Sticking with the Cowboys and two of their NRLW players are one step closer to being a part of State of Origin history this year. Emma Manzelman and Mackenzie Wheel have been named in Queensland's extended squad for the opening game of the first three-match women's Origin series. Wheel was 19th player for Game 2 last year but is still waiting for her dream debut in the Maroon and it could come later this month. Mackenzie Wheel that's come through our pathways as well, like really good opportunity for those girls and um, some super talented athletes and yeah, I, I'm really happy to have them included in the squad. And the Cowboys have also announced the promotion of two players to their top squad. Emily Bella and Caitlin Tanner have agreed to development contracts. Tanner was recently selected in the Queensland under-19s emerging squad alongside Ebony Rafstrand-Smith and Lily Peacock. The Townsville Blackhawks will be hoping to claim back-to-back -back wins for the first time this Q Cup season when they welcome PNG to Jack Mansky Oval. The Hunters are yet to win a game on the road in 2024 and Townsville would love to keep it that way as they search for a spot in the top eight. The Blackhawks are preparing for everything and anything on Sunday. They're one of those unpredictable teams and I've been watching quite a bit of footage of them over the last couple of weeks and expect anything. Uh, offloads, kicks, um, they literally you know, love contact. So those shoulders will have to be warmed up in preparation for PNG's pack. It's a good thing Townsville's defence has been on the up. The boys were good at, in parts on the weekend. There's still a few uh, lapses that we want to work on, um, especially after back-to-back -back sets. They still sit in 11th with the Hunters following closely behind in 12th, but momentum is in the Blackhawks' favour. Townsville toppled Redcliffe while the Hunters were left hurt by a brawl with the Bears 48 to 24. It's going to be physical and the ice bars are going to be needed on Monday morning. Switching to basketball and the Townsville Heat have a David and Goliath battle awaiting them tomorrow in the NBL 1 North. They will suit up against title favourites, the Darwin Salties. Well, it's an NBL team, so you know, it's, it's a fair test. But Townsville won't be their first opponents of the round. The team from the Territory are about to match up with the Cairns Marlins later tonight. I don't think we're ever going to be scared or afraid of anybody. I mean, that's not the way we are. And the, the people in the group, are, you know, they understand it's a bit of a challenge, but a challenge is not a bad thing to have. The Flames tip off at 5.30pm, followed by the Heat at 7.30. Emma Halliday, 7 News. Fair test, but I'm sure the team's up for the challenge. We'll find out. Mm. That's it for sport tonight. Thanks, guys. Lovely note. Thank you, mate. And stay with us after the break. Tiani Reid joins us and she'll have all the weekend weather details. Good evening, Tiani Reid with Seven Local Weather. If you're going to be out and about over the long weekend, fingers crossed conditions stay in your favour, there might be some showers in the usual coastal areas, but hopefully nothing too heavy. Temperatures today across the Herbert Burdekin, Townsville was the warmest at 30 degrees, Air and Bowen both had a high of 29, and it was also 29 in Charters Towers. On the satellite loop, the whole of the southeast was smothered by cloud today, extending to the downs. Another big patch was sitting over the far north, and the rest of the coastline had some speckled coverage too. On today's chart, the inland trough over western Queensland has moved closer, coming into contact with an invisible upper-level trough moving in from New South Wales. That's fired up a few storms, and we could see some increased activity around the Queensland border tonight. On tomorrow's chart, the slow-moving trough could potentially trigger some storms in the downs early in the morning, as well as more showers in the southeast as well. But as it comes closer to the coast, inland areas will start to clear to fairly dry conditions. And now the latest from the Weather Bureau, the boating forecast for Townsville waters, southeasterlies between 15 and 20 knots, with seas up to one and a half metres. Similar again on Sunday and Monday as well. For anyone keen to hit the water this weekend, high tide will be at 6 tomorrow morning, ahead of the low in the early afternoon.
For the Herbert and Lower Burdekin, partly cloudy tomorrow with a slight chance of a shower near the coast in the afternoon and evening, but not likely anywhere else. A top of 30 degrees again in Townsville tomorrow, air ranging from 18 to 29 and Ingham 28. For the northern goldfields in Upper Flinders, fine and mostly sunny conditions, reaching a warm 32 in Georgetown, 31 for Richmond and Charters Towers heading for 29 degrees. Looking ahead for Townsville, much of the same every day for the next week. Partly cloudy conditions with the slight chance of a shower, maybe a slight drop in temps on Wednesday. Grace captured this rare double rainbow at Kalula Cove and isn't it just gorgeous? Thanks for sending that in. Feel free to share your best sunset pics to our email and Facebook page and it might get a feature. I'm off to relax for the rest of the weekend but I'll be back on Monday with more weather updates. Hope you can tune in then. Now it's back to the team. Yeah, thank you very much Tiani. Lovely having your company. Have a great weekend. We'll catch you Monday. And also a reminder, you can watch a replay of our news on the 7 Plus app or catch up on our page, 7news.com.au. And from all of us here, enjoy your weekend. Good night. Good night.